In this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how I go about building a $10,000 per month winning product. And I want you to notice how I said the word building instead of finding. Last night, I had the opportunity to co-host a meetup in downtown Chicago. I got the chance to teach this exact presentation and methodology behind building a winning product to around 40 people. We had a great turnout. I spoke about Shopify and Facebook ads. The other co-host, David Zaleski, spoke about Amazon FBA. I'll link the meetup group down in the description. If you're ever in the Chicago area, you should definitely come to one of these events. It was absolutely great networking with other e-commerce individuals from beginners to advanced in the Chicago area and it's only going to continue to evolve. So this is what I taught last night live in Chicago and I'm gonna teach you guys the exact process that I taught them last night. So this is how I build a $10,000 per month winning product. So my name is Dylan Pearson. I'm an e-commerce entrepreneur. I have a marketing agency called Dylan.Business and obviously, as you know, since you're watching this video, I'm a YouTuber. So I wanna discuss my entrepreneurship journey and what I'm gonna explain throughout the entrepreneurship journey, just a quick overview, is some key points and key events in my journey that should give you some reassurance that you're going in the right direction. Then we're gonna talk about the single key to great marketing, how to run profitable Facebook ads, not just Facebook ads, but profitable Facebook ads, and the seven criteria to building a $10,000 per month product. I want you to take notice of this right here. The majority of gurus on the internet teach you how to find a winning product, then they'll teach you about Facebook ads, and they might mention marketing. I want you to notice how I've completely reversed this process and I'm gonna explain why it's really important and why I think it's insanely beneficial to reverse this process. So this is my journey. I'm just gonna quickly go through this and kind of explain how I got to this point. So in 2007, I, st I started doing some website development at the age of 14. I created websites for local restaurants and online baseball card traders. 2010, I launched a YouTube channel, grew up to five million views and 18,000 subscribers. It was a gaming channel, I did commentary and gameplay. Uh, in 2012, I got a fine for having beer in my dorm room and I was a sophomore in college. I didn't want to call my parents and ask, you know, to pay off the fine. That would have been an awkward conversation. So what I did is I started flipping Twitter followers on eBay. I would buy Twitter followers, like 100,000 followers for $20 on Fiverr and sell it for $100 on eBay. Needless to say, I quickly paid off that fine and had some more money to buy beer. So it worked out really well. 2015, graduated from college. I started my career as a software developer in Chicago here and why I wanted to point this out and why I feel it's important is to show you guys that all this all this time spent working on e-com and reaching trying to reach my goals of entrepreneurship I did have a full-time job so it is very possible if you're currently in a situation where you are working and you have the dream of doing this full-time it's very possible to work towards that in 2016 I co-founded xb-com grew it to 4,000 members uh, with two other people here in Chicago within two months fortunately we ran into some legal issues monetizing the site so we had to shut it down 2017 was my first go in e-com. I launched a uh, private labeled headphone brand called Brain Pods on Amazon FBA. I did have a Shopify store, but I didn't really use it. And I also started another software developer job at E-Trade. Um, the, the headphone market was really saturated, so I sold my 50 or 100 units and I kind of got out of that, so I dropped the brain pods. Then I launched Brain Farm here, which is my, uh, it's still up, you can go check it out, it's a private label brand and it's shopbrainfarm.com. And I scaled it up to about $2,000 per month, it was like $900 profit per month, nothing crazy. But back in 2007, I had set the goal for myself. I said, by the time I turn 26, I wanna own a business full time. And I was 25 and I'm like, you know what? I know I have the skills. I've been working for this for so long. I know I can do it. I'm just gonna go for it. I had some money saved up. And so I'm like, you know, March 13th, it's two days after I get my yearly bonus. I'm gonna quit my job and go for it. I had the skills as a software developer. So if it doesn't work out, I can uh, you know, get another job pretty quickly. I can pick up some freelance work. So I'm gonna go for it. So I set the deadline, March 13th, I'm quitting my job. A week before I quit, I launched my first drop shipping brand because I had only done private label before and I scaled it to 54,000 in the first 17 days. Since that point of in March 13th, since March 13th, I've done a little over a half a million dollars in e-commerce revenue. I have my marketing agency 
and I also upload to YouTube, as you guys know, a minimum of two times per week. So this is kind of my story. What I wanna point out here is you're probably wondering, how did I go from doing $2,000 a month to doing 54,000 in the first 17 days of a brand launch? There was a key aspect of my mindset that changed, and this is it. I used to have the mindset, if you build it, they will come. And I would build these great apps, these great websites. I'd build these great headphones that sounded better than Beats by Dre for one third of the cost. And it just wouldn't really work the way I wanted it to. So my mindset's like, oh, you know, people aren't using it. People aren't purchasing. I must I must have not did, did a good enough job. So I would restart, try something new. But I realized my mindset was wrong. And then I switched it. And my mindset now that I always use is if you build it, and you have great marketing, then they will come. And that is what completely flipped that ignition ignition switch for me. So great marketing always wins. And these are some examples, there's thousands of examples. Is Ciroc Vodka better than Kirkland Vodka? Is Beats by Dre better than Audio Technica? Is Rolex better than Grand Seiko? I don't want you to think about the colors and the look because that's always debatable, that's personal preference. I want you to think about the core product. What is inside that bottle of vodka? The internals of the headphones, the, the mechanisms and the watches. And the answer is no, you know, it's really not better, but why can these companies charge an insanely high price, have great margins and do huge volume? It's because they have great marketing. And I want you to remember this. So when I scaled my first company to $300,000 in a couple months, I was selling $25 higher than my closest competitor. Why was that? Because of perceived quality, perceived branding. So I focused on my marketing, my, my funnels, my branding, and I really took the aspect of like Ciroc Vodka, Beats by Dre, Rolex, that premium branding, and it gives that a perceived quality. So this is what allows you, will, will allow you to sell a winning product at a much higher price, get those margins you need to generate high profit. So keep this in mind and think of some other examples. There's thousands of them out there. So what's the single key to great marketing? It's emotions. And while there's a ton of aspects to great marketing that I do cover on my channel, and if you're already a subscriber, you've probably seen those, but if you're new, make sure to go check those out because I deep dive into them. But for the sake of this, uh, you know, building a winning product, I want you to remember one key aspect of marketing, and that is emotional marketing. Humans buy on emotions. Think about the last purchase you made. There's definitely emotions involved. And obviously, there's there's necessity. There's, there are products that you buy due to necessity, but we're trying to sell something. So we want to focus on the aspect of emotion. And throughout this presentation, keep the focus on we are building a $10,000 winning product here. We're not finding one, we're building one. So keep the key, emotional marketing. And here's some examples, joy. Uh, the various seasons. So like my girlfriend gets so joyful when the fall season comes around and she goes out and buys all these different pumpkin spice flavored things. Our kitchen's full of it now. All these different decorations. Um, anger. Let's say you're in the gym working towards your muscle that you desire and you, you can't achieve it. And then Optimum Nutrition Whey Protein hits you with a great marketing ad that really draws on that anger emotion that you're feeling in the gym. And of course, you're gonna buy it. Sadness, inability to attend your child's graduation due to back pain. Uh, you can get like the acupressure max, the, the posture correctors, correctors. So there's so many different things. Uh, dislike, Trump versus Clinton. Trump products are selling a million dollars plus per day on Facebook ads. Still, just because the people that really, really dislike Clinton, Hillary Clinton will buy the Trump stuff to show their support. So, Humans buy on emotions, and especially when it comes to Facebook ads, trying to get that cold traffic impulse buy, focus on emotional marketing. So where should you start with great marketing? Like how do you, how do you get into this? How do you learn how to utilize your emotions? And there's two amazing books that I highly recommend. I have one of them here with me, um, but the other one's in the picture. It's, oh, it's actually right here too, so. The first one is How to Write Copy That Sells by Ray Edwards. It, it's gonna teach you how to write product descriptions that you can utilize those, those angers, the joy in, in the emotions of the viewer and the reader in your product descriptions and really just draw it out of them. Um, amazing book, it's like $13 on Amazon. Amazon, it's a must read. Ogilvy on Advertising by David Ogilvy. David Ogilvy is one of the 
innovators of marketing in the 1940s, 1950s. He did all the Rolls Royce marketing, Guinness, the big cigarette companies at the time. And what you're gonna notice when you read this book is even though it was written in the 1950s, 1960s, the core contents that are taught by him still apply today. And with my channel, I try to place a huge focus on the core aspects of marketing. And why do I do that? I feel like the gurus on YouTube right now focus way too much on the platforms like Facebook ads, Google ads, instead of focusing on how to correctly utilize a platform. So, you know, anyone can learn how to set up a CBO campaign and set budgets and set up retargeting. But if you don't understand what you're going to utilize those platforms for, you're not going to find success. And once you learn these core content of marketing by David Ogilvy, you're going to be able to apply it to your Facebook ad. So definitely pick these books up. And this is how you're going to start to learn how to uh, utilize great marketing that will always win for you and help you build that winning product. So we have the first piece of building a $10,000 per month winning product, and that is emotional marketing. Now I want to talk about running profitable Facebook ads, not just running Facebook ads, but profitable Facebook ads. And I got the quote here that's a common one. Facebook ads don't work. And you've seen this in the, in the chats and the forums and the Facebook groups. But who's saying this? Most likely the person that doesn't understand marketing and what we just discussed. So this is where it comes in. If you understand how to set up a Facebook ad campaign, that's great. But if you don't know how to utilize and what to put into that Facebook ad campaign and show the viewers and show the potential customers, it's not going to work and it's going to be expensive. You're going to lose your money. So if Facebook ads aren't working for you right now, focus on emotions. And this is why I kind of, you're starting, I hope you're starting to see why I reverse engineer this process. So emotional marketing, and you're going to utilize Facebook ads to make that emotional marketing uh, just really explode. So let's get into it. What is working in 2019? So this is what's ineffective, and this is my experience. Obviously, there's gonna be people that have different experiences, but this is what I am finding ineffective and effective. Images to cold audiences, uh, except like the wow images, and this is tough to do. If you can get an image that shows a problem, solution, and is a scroll stopper, also has a clear call to action, it might work, but that's 95% of the time very, very difficult. Videos that show product and service and only focus on the features. So let's say I'm selling this watch here. If I was only focusing on the features, I'd say has a stainless steel band, it has 41 millimeters face, uh, keeps the time. You can track two different time zones. That is not good. What you would be what what you could do instead is focus on the emotional aspects. Maybe someone you know is is angry. They're not getting the recognition by their friends and family. So you could be like, this watch will get you the recognition and confidence that you deserve. Something like that. So stop focusing on the features. It doesn't work. People aren't on Facebook to buy. So trying to sell them off the features is not nearly as effective as selling off the benefits and the emotional benefits. Um, copy with offer to cold audiences. This used to work like under a year ago, but I'm going to explain my reasoning behind this. So this is where you see like 50% off plus free shipping today only. And as I talked about earlier, I'm all about big margins. And to do that, you need perceived quality. And to have perceived quality, you need premium branding. If a, a company like Gucci shows you an ad and it says 50% off free shipping today only, it would lower the quality of their brand. Why would a company with a great brand and a great product offer you a discount up front? It doesn't make sense and it lowers the perceived quality. So I don't do this and I find it to be ineffective. People are just kind of numb to this. It lowers the quality of your product and you can't you know, charge as much. So that is what's ineffective. So let's talk about what is effective. So what is effective? Engaging videos. My favorite is the storytelling format. And I have a video called How to Turn Any Product into a Winning Product that goes deep dive into this, shows you exactly how to do it. I'll link it down in the description. Highly recommend it. But basically, the storytelling format is a video like this. Praise Jesus, she's 102 years old, running 100 meter sprint races. We interviewed her and she finally let her secret slip. World's oldest sprinter banishes back pain. So it's not talking about selling you anything, it's telling a story. So if you watch this video, in the next 90 seconds, you know they, they tell a story about this 102 year old lady that banished her back pain and started running. 
These work so well because it's native to the newsfeed. Once again, people aren't on Facebook to buy. They are on Facebook to enjoy the content, share it with family and friends. So when someone comes across a story like this, it's great. It draws that, that emotion out of them. You're happy watching this, this elder lady you, you know, achieve her dream of running these sprints and banishing her back pain. But what it does then is at the end, it says like, okay, you wanna learn more about this, hit the learn more button, people click it, it takes them to a landing page that appears to be a blog post. It continues with the story, and eventually it lets you in on the secret of how the 102-year-old lady banished her back pain, explains the product, and then, without being salesy, it completely sells it to you. So it's like, here's the product she used, you click it and you're already sold. You're like, if a 102-year-old lady can banish her back pain, so can I. So the storytelling format works great. People share it, people tag it, virality goes crazy. Uh, next, using personal pages as an advertiser. Let's say your website's called like skyshop.com. That's a horrible name, but let's just say so. Instead of using a skyshop.com, use a page like Mary Lou or John Eckberg. Like use a real person's name and create a personal page and use it as an advertiser. Once again, we're focusing on being native to the newsfeed. And by doing this, you're just gonna engage people. They're gonna be more likely to share it and not feel like they're being sold to. Then you take them to that blog post format. And whenever someone comments on your ad, focus on engaging your customers with comments. My favorite way to do this is utilizing GIFs. So if someone leaves a comment, I'll respond with like a sarcastic, humorous GIF that strikes up a conversation. This is gonna lower your CPMs and just drive that conversation and continue to drive the virality of your ad and increase that high organic reach for free. So I want you to notice everything in this effective side is doing one thing. It's focusing on pleasing the Facebook user. It's not focusing on selling them. And ever since Facebook went through those issues with Cambridge Analytica, um, Zuckerberg has placed a huge focus on transparency and improving the Facebook user's experience. So if you can help him do that, you're gonna see your ad costs drop and your results increase. So focus on pleasing the user in a way that doesn't come off as salesy, but still sell your product. And using these right here work really well. So now that you understand what works, how do you structure a viral Facebook ad? So this is my three-step viral ad formula, and I also have a video I'll link it down in the description where I go through exactly how to do this. So first, I utilize a three to five second shocker. It's the clip, it's a scroll stopper that makes someone react, says, wow, they're shocked, happy, scared, amazed. It engages the user for the continuation of the video. You need to focus on, this is your only chance here to stop that person from scrolling out of the next post and take notice. And what you can do here is I usually don't even use a clip of my product unless it, it can wow the user. I'll use something related in the same industry and I focus on you know making them go, whoa, what did I just see? They're gonna tag their friends to see the same thing they just watched. And this is key to driving that virality. Next, it goes into a 20 second problem and solution. This is the core content of your video. It's gonna present the problem that the user or the viewer has and clearly present someone utilizing your product or service in real life to benefit their life. This is gonna draw out the emotion. So focus on what emotion that viewer might be feeling with that pain point and show them that there is a solution. Then you move into a five second clear call to action. This is your last chance to move them from your cold traffic into your existing customer base or just into your warm or hot customers So, or uh, potential customers. You need to be clear and be loud. Don't just say buy now. Tell them what button to click, where it's located and put it in big letters. Don't let them leave the video without taking another action. So be very clear and loud with your five second call to action. So this is how I structure them. And here I have an example, and you guys probably all know this. This is uh, one of Gabriel St. Germain's ad um, when he was selling the posture corrector. And I like it because it follows this format. So he, here you see the three to five second shocker. It intrigues you, you're like, whoa, what is this that just made that lady slouching go to like perfect posture, and it intrigues you. It talks about the problem, so it corrects your posture. It shows someone throughout the entire video utilizing in real life, helps keep your spine aligned. He did an amazing job with that. So you can say goodbye to back pain. Anyone with back pain feels that pain and that emotion, and they, they wanna get rid of it. Stand a little taller and with confidence. Anyone you know that might be angry about their height or their ego and they want you know more confidence, 
Then they once again show how easy it is to utilize it. Just toss it under your clothes. And then finally, they'll go into their call to action. He decided to utilize, um, share this and tag a friend because he wanted the vi virality and it worked out well for them. So that is how I structure the majority of my ads nowadays. It works really well, straight to the point. You get the user in, you present their problem and a solution, and then you tell them what to do next. So it is now time to build your winning product. So you understand what it takes for marketing, which is emotions. You understand what it takes for Facebook ads, pleasing the user and virality. Now, it should be very clear what type of product you should sell. You need to sell a product that allows you to draw emotions, so a product that solves a problem and a major pain point, and you need a product that allows you to utilize like a wow clip. So if your product doesn't wow, like if you can't build something that grasps that user attention is related, you can't structure that viral ad. And if it doesn't, you know, problem solution, you can't structure that viral ad. So when you look at a product now, you know it needs to utilize those two aspects to be a winning product. And if we would have done this the normal normal way, how most people teach it, where you find a product, you launch Facebook ads, and most people don't even talk about marketing, you're, you're playing in the dark. You have no idea if you can build those viral Facebook ads. You have no idea how you're gonna utilize the emotions. But if you go into product research, and if you have a winning product in mind, you now know whether it's something that you can build a winning product around. So what are my criteria for a $10,000 per month product? And this is what I've followed for the past year and a half. Um, does it solve a problem? It's the easiest type of product to sell on Facebook ads. You can focus on their pain points. Is it in an uptrend? Google Trends, utilize it. If it's starting an uptrend, you know it's gonna have a higher span in a life, a shelf time than if you know, it's it's at the peak or if it doesn't. If it's at the peak, you could probably sell it, but it's gonna be tough to sell it for a sustainable amount of time. Just have a large target market. The larger the market, easier it is to scale and the more people you can hit and more customers you can essentially achieve. Are there other competitors doing well with the product? No one's gonna be running an ad at scale with 4,000, 10,000, 20,000 likes and if it's not generating them a profit. So this is very important to check, and I make sure at least one other person is selling this currently before I hop into it. Is it? Can you find it at Walmart? Um, if you can, why would someone buy it from a random website instead of going to Walmart? They, you know, No one really would, it wouldn't make sense. Uh, would you or someone you know buy it? This is a good one to do. It, you have to be careful though. If you go up to someone to say like, hey, I'm gonna sell this product, it's awesome, they're gonna have preconceived bias towards their answer. So go up to someone, your friend or family, and be like, hey, check this out, what do you think? Don't tell them you're gonna sell it and just see what the response is. Uh, a lot of times I think something's awesome and I'll ask my girlfriend, she's like, no, you can find this at a store, uh, you can get it cheaper here and, and you know, without knowing that, I would have tried to sell it and I would have failed. Important to do and that's six. I didn't include one other one and that's margin. I. If I can't sell a product for a minimum of a 3X markup, I don't even consider it. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't even consider products under $30 um, of, of a sales price. So if I can't sell something for $30, I don't consider it. And I wanna give, I want to give you an exact example here. So I had a product that cost me $7, sold it for $37.99, uh, $37 and that margin there allowed me to continuously scale even when competitors were trying to get in the market. They would try to sell theirs for 20, but that added price added to that perceived quality, that perceived premium branding, and that margin allowed me to remain successful for a very long time compared to people jumping into it. So when you are looking at products, ensure it meets this criteria, Ensure that you can draw emotions out of people with that product and your angles with the marketing. And make sure you understand how to create a viral video around it and use that three-step structure. It works really well. So these are my favorite tools, AdSpy and the Facebook ad library. AdSpy is pretty expensive. It's $150 per month. I do have like an affiliate link that gives you a completely free seven-day free trial. I'll put it down there. It's worth testing out. You can filter criteria like by likes, and if it's still running when it was created, helps you do product research and ad research and marketing research really quick. 
Facebook ad library, this is completely free. You can type in a competitor's um, name page. You can type in Donald Trump and see he's spending a million dollars per week right now um, just you know, building for that upcoming election. So it's a great and really powerful tool that they added that they added to be more transparent. So works well, highly recommend utilizing these tools. So now you understand what you need to build a $10,000 per month product. I see so many YouTubers uploading how to find a winning product and that's great. You can have a product that would sell, but if you don't understand the marketing and the emotional aspects behind the product and how to drive virality, it's not going to be a winning product. Necessarily, any, any product could be a winning product if you have the right marketing and right structure of your vi viral ads behind it. And that's what I want you to understand. Go into your product research with great marketing in mind and Facebook ads and the virality, scalability, the target market in mind. And that is how you build a winning product. So now when you watch these videos from people that show you what products that they, they say you should sell, you can actually gauge whether you can build the skeleton of a $10,000 per month product around it. So if you want to learn more of the advanced topics of the specifics of how to run these campaigns for this product now that you have the knowledge of the emotional aspects, um, if you want to know how to turn any product into a winning product, how to do CBO, custom audience retargeting and strategies, uh, $100,000 per month masterclass, check out my channel. I have so many videos deep diving into these topics. If you guys have any questions at all, um, drop a comment. I respond to all the comments. And if you want to reach out to me personally, send me a DM on Instagram. Give me a follow on there. At Dylan Business is my account. Shoot me an email if you're interested in consulting or having my agency run ads for your brand. So we can chat there through email, talk at Dylan.business. I hope you guys found this valuable. And what I really wanted to focus on here is the aspect of building a $10,000 per month product and why I focus on these different key aspects. Any product will sell if you have the right marketing and the right ad structure behind it. And that's where a lot of people go wrong and where I used to go wrong is I would find these products that you know, people said were winners and it just would never work out for me. And I realized why it didn't work was because I didn't understand the previous two needy concepts to find success. So I really hope you guys found value in this. Shoot me any questions and I'll see you in the next video. Dylan out.